Hi, my name's Anthony Ward and welcome to this tutorial for 3D World magazine. Now you may recognize this guy from the previous tutorial where we investigated the various modeling improvements in Maya 2015. Now these were new tools, these were improved tools, but we basically went through the process of creating this guy just using Maya and just, just showing the basic process for getting the model that you can see before you. Now it does look a little different and that's because we also had boots and clothing and a belt and some other elements in the scene. But what I've done for the purpose of this course is strip a lot of those out so that we can just focus on the body and his scalp and his brain. And that will allow us to show the basic process for um, applying UVs. And then we'll take the model full, when it's fully UV'd into another application. Now this could be um, 3D coat, it could be mud box, it could be Z brush, it could be anything that you want really. It could even be you use the UV's layout to help guide you paint a texture in Photoshop. But the, the main idea behind this course is to again show improvements in May 2015's UV tools, um, see them in action and just also work with a character that's not symmetrical. Too many times we see examples of characters being UV'd or modelled who are pretty much symmetrical but it's nice every now and again to work with a character that's a little bit different because you have different things to contend with like the UV unfold tools work really well with a, uh, a symmetric, symmetrical character but when it's not symmetrical you have other things to contend with. So yes, like I say, throughout this workshop we're going to look at UVing the character and then later on we'll export him take him into ZBrush to paint those textures um, and then we'll just take it from there. So we have our ego character here. Let's open up our UV texture editor as so, like so. Now at the moment if we select the body you can see the UVs are just awful. They're not workable, um, not usable at all. And that's because we were focused purely on modeling so we were extruding, cutting, slicing, welding, collapsing and not even giving a second thought to the UVs. So now that the model's done we can start to turn our attention to the UVs because we need those in place so that we can apply the texture um, and paint in those extra details that are needed. Now again, once UV'd you could even sculpt more details into him rather than just focus on the texture, it's entirely up to you. So, let's start working on uh, adding in his UVs. Now initially we need a basic set of UVs just to kick us off, just something to start working with. So I'm just going to hold shift, right click, go down to mapping and play in our map Z. Now as you can see here, we've got a basic layout of UVs, you know, just a basic projection from the front it's not even the right proportions but I'm not too concerned about that it's just going to give us the UVs that we uh, that we can start off with so now we have those UVs in place let's just move him over to one side now you'll notice as I move him there's a bit of a lag and a bit of a stutter and that's because we have smooth mesh enabled so it may be we press one and drop down to the base proxy mesh and as you can see that's a lot easier to work with. So feel free to jump between smooth mesh enabled and disabled as you're working to help speed up your own workflow. So let's work on the head first. Now at the moment the geometry we can't really see the edge that we're going to be selecting. So I'm just going to press three and that's just going to smooth out this area here so we can see this edge running around the head. Now we want this edge visible so that we can define it as a UV border. If I double click that edge now, we just have a look round and it should go all the way around the back of the head. 
I'm not too concerned that it comes up onto the neck slightly there. That's not, not an issue. So now we've got that selected, we can go polygons, cut UV edges. And what that will allow us to do, if we go to shell, so I'll just do that again. Select one UV in the UV editor. Control right click, go to shell. That's just selecting the head because we've cut those UV edges. That's detached the head shell from the body shell. We can now move this to one side and focus just on working on this. Now we defined the UV border around the neck. But if we try and unwrap the head now, I'm just going to focus just on the head. If we try and unwrap the head now, it won't unfold because there's, st there's still a connection at the back. Basically, if we look from the top, we've got projection from the front, but we've got the UVs connected at the back, at the front, and each side. What we basically want to do is cut here at the back and then physically peel those sides open. So before we start to play around with the UV tools and unwrapping and unfolding tools, we need to define a second, uh, a second UV border. So we select the edges down there because we know that we want this to unpeel from the back of the head. Just make sure there's none selected on the body as well. Now we've chosen the back of the head because it's an area that's seen the least and when you're working with UV mapping and UV shells you have to keep in mind sort of where your seams are. Put them where they're not going to be visible. Even hide them if you can. I mean here, the back of the head, as you can see, once we've got the clothing in, you're not going to see that area at all. So it doesn't matter if there's even a little bit of a seam there. So with that selected, cut those UV edges again, like so. Just going to go delete by type history, just to keep, keep things clean. Drop down, back down to our proxy mesh. Now, traditionally, we would right click. I'm just going to reset this. Now, traditionally, we'll just skip over this for a second. You would right click on the unfold tools here and you'd get these options here. And you, they're still available even in like this legacy form. And what you would normally do is you would pin UVs, pin unselected UVs, so these will be pinned and not affected at all by this operation. And we'd maybe use an unfold constraint of none click apply and you'd end up with something like this. As you can see we've got UV shooting off up here. They're collapsing around the eyes because there's no geometry currently in the eyes and we probably should fill in the eye sockets um, before the end of uh, this course but um, because there's no geometry in the eyes there's nothing to to sort of you know there's nothing for the geometry around the eyes to sort of, there's nothing there to dictate what size the geometry should be inside the eye sockets, so they're basically collapsing. Now you could fix that, like I say, by putting geometry inside the eyes, and that would unfold a little bit better. But still we've got issues like this here. It's not brilliantly fold, unfolded. And again, this is probably down to the... Um, the fact that the character isn't symmetrical. Now, our options now are to go in and just to start to play around with some of these, or we could just go back. We could try using different constraints. So maybe we unfold it so it just unfolds horizontally. Click apply, and that it's worked, but it's Again, it's all collapsed in on the middle, so what we'd have to do is apply vertically as well. There we go. And then we'd probably maybe select the middle of the face, or deselect the middle of the face, click none, click apply, 
and that's starting to work on these areas here but this side's smaller than this and as, as you can see I'll just undo undo all that as you can see it can be quite time consuming on a model like this where you're then having to unfold horizontally vertically use none adjust those um, vert, uh, UVs manually just to pin areas and then relaxing them you know it starts what should be an easy job starts getting more complex and this is probably the reason why a lot of people use external tools when it comes to UVing rather than using Myers. So let's go to the Unfold 3D option which is the default option now. Now I'm going to turn off Pack because that will just try and pack all the uh, elements into this square here and I'm just going to click Apply. So yes we've still got issues here and here but the basic unfold process is pretty good you know the eyes are nicely rounded here the mouth and the ears and that is a lot well it's a much improved version of what we had previously yes we still have work to do but we can work with this a lot better. And what I'm going to do is just, so we can maybe just rotate it like so, and then just line up these edges to try and make these more vertical, because the back of the head was a straight line. So we could leave this like this, and it's absolutely fine. We could work with this. We're just going to paint the textures on manually anyway, but if you were going to use this in Photoshop and just use a UV layout, it's good to try and have these sort of edges straight um, just to help guide you a lot better as you're painting. If you're painting in a 3D application and then baking out the texture, it's, it's, uh, it's not as important. So we could just rotate that like so and then use the align tools just to straighten that edge there. Do the same with this side. Just rotate that like so, so it's almost vertical. Then use the align tools here just to snap those to that side there. And then I'm just going to move this over here so they're roughly in the same place. Move it back over like so. And then I'm going to select just the middle UVs and use the unfold again. So that's now straightened this up just close this down just press 3 to smooth that out so again that's a lot better and it's a lot easier to work with now if you wanted to you could go in and use these align tools to make sure this point and this point are aligned on the same vertical axis and the same all the way down here um, one problem is as you can see these points are coming in um, and joining together here but we can change that in the smooth mesh tools if I just come down here I just want to switch that on just so we're using open subdiv that's changed it slightly and then we can adjust these settings down here like that. We've changed that to sharp edges and corners and it's opened up that area there where those two points were pinching and now they're easier to select and if you wanted to line those up you could select them like so use the align tool and those will snap together and be on the same axis and that's like I say it's not as important for this character but it may be that if you're taking this UV layout into Photoshop and you need to paint something and those uh, seams there join up exactly that could be an option for the way to work. Now we have the head UV'd it would be, it would be great to be able to visualize it in the scene here and traditionally I, would, I have a checker map which I would bring into the scene um, apply it to the model and then that shows me areas where there are elements that are um, stretched, distorted, pinched or even inverted. 
But now in Maya 2015, there's actually a built-in checker map. So we can click on that up here, display checker tiles. Now even though that's displayed in here, we've not we can't really see it in here. So I'm just going to go and make sure render viewport 2.0 is enabled. Now again, you may get this issue where it just comes up yellow or, or an alternative color. I'll just drop that down slightly. If we go to our Igor shape node, now I changed this earlier, but basically the smooth mesh um, algorithm is using the open subdiv. If we disable that and change this back to Catmull Clark, you can see that fixes that then and we can see that checker map once the model is selected. So we can see here it's directly matching. We've got this uh, lilac um, grid square there and it's coming in over here. So this just shows us that down here, this bit's collapsing in on itself very, very slightly. And I mean, it's very slightly, so it may not be an issue. But it just gives you a good idea and a good representation of um, how the texture, once you've painted it, overlays on top of the model. What we can do is go to Show and Turn Off Selection Highlight and that way we can just see the texture on its own and edit the UVs as well. So we could, if we wanted to, come in here, turn on soft selection, and we can move this up and down in here, and we can see it on the actual mesh in here. Let's just turn that back on. So that's the head laid out like I say you can tweak those a little bit more if you want um, I'm going to adjust those ever so slightly but what I might do is I might just end this first video here and then in the next video we'll start to uh, follow the same process but we'll work our way through the uh, through the limbs